Thank you so much. And this is uh, Becky Adams, Ellie Pinion in Second Life. <clears throat> we are so pleased to be part a part of the Sustainable Futures in Action Conference. And we thank each of you for coming to our presentation today. It's great to see you and talk about teaching and learning in virtual worlds. We have so enjoyed our collaboration with Marat and John. They are amazing, innovative instructors, and it's been an honor to meet their students as well. Marie will talk more about that in just a few minutes. The Virtual World Education Consortium is celebrating our third year of incredible growth and progress. We really connect with the theme of the conference, Innovate to Sustain. Since our sustainability is virtual here, our vision of bringing virtual world educators together has been exciting and even unexpected. Those of us who teach using virtual worlds are the very definition of a sustainable future in action. Before we go farther, I would like to share my personal story. <clears throat> I moved from teaching in public school, K-12, to the university while working on my PhD. I started both teaching for the College of Education and serving as the director of online course development at our university, which had about 25,000 students. Prior to that, in addition to having my own classroom, I had been teaching teachers around our state how to use technology in education. Second Life had been around a few years and it was starting to get the attention of educators. My first look at Second Life was watching on a projector while the presenter was the avatar, similar to you today. To be honest, I found it strange and I just wasn't that interested. But it kept popping up in conferences that I attended and my boss wanted us to go in and see what it was all about. So my team and I did. Shortly after that, a department in the College of Education took their online students in and my team had to support them. As an educational technology educational technology educator, I began to see the benefit of the environment that could easily be adapted to whatever content you were teaching and the great opportunity to allow students to create around their learning. So I brought my students in. I have now brought each of my classes in each semester that I've taught since that, and that was in 2009. Since retiring from my position as the Director of Online Course Development, I found many others who were teaching in virtual worlds and having great success with using them with their, with their students, but it seemed we were all out there doing things on our own, and the potential for us to work together and then be better at it was too great to ignore. So, after a couple of conversations, we decided to do something and the VWEC was created. In that, it became the goal of the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium. I can't speak this morning, I apologize. <clears throat> the goal of VWEC is to bring educators together, both to share what has been successful and to tackle obstacles across virtual platforms and communities. We are here to provide opportunities for education in all areas, higher ed, K-12, and nonprofits, to share what works. For those of us that teach, we know that isn't just one approach. There are many approaches. It also opened up interest in teaching with the exciting technologies that we have available to us. It is also clear that we can be even more effective if we work together. If you need to have your students come into a safe classroom setting, if you need tools to help you teach your content, if you need a viewer that isn't going to update in the middle of a class in a lab where you don't have permission to download, it helps to ask for help to, with other educators who have the same issues. Even if you just need to know how you can use a virtual world environment to teach your content, it is clear that together we are better and having a community to connect us keeps us all, helps us all, excuse me. I do want to mention that we know that there have been several similar in initiatives in the past to bring educators together and we are standing on their shoulders and appreciate all the work that was done 
to improve teaching in virtual worlds, so we aren't the first. In that, we are not here to reinvent the wheel. We want to bring the amazing educational groups that already exist together so that we can share, not replicate. We want to support groups that are already doing great work, not reinvented. That is a constant challenge, as there is a lot of opportunity to, to do just another class or workshop. Our goals are to have just a few meetings to bring us together, so we have, because we have busy educators, uh, so we have four quarterly meetings. Through meeting quarterly, we hoped that educational communities can collaborate and document progress on best, best practices for teaching and learning in virtual environments. As we became organized, we started having fireside chats as well as an expert series that we will talk about later to give an opportunity to discuss teaching and learning with colleagues. We then built a Models for Teaching. And I think we're going to take you over there. So shall we slip over to the Models for Teaching? Okay. Recording stopped. For some reason, it's not giving it to me, so I'm going Recording a little slow. Recording in progress. Let me try. Here we go. Now I'm ready. Thank you. And I'll just wait just a minute while you guys catch up with us. Looks like we're here. Okay. <clears throat> this exhibit has seven started with seven amazing educators who, and who show their approaches to teaching in virtual worlds. And later we added six more lifelong learning teachers so that they could share how they teach. We feel like all good teaching includes examples and this will let everyone see what works for them. Here you will hear from the instructor, see examples of their approaches. You might hear from their students and can even go to their actual classroom as you have time. We have recently added, so I'm, I need to double check where, what you're looking at. Oh, good. So if you can pan around, Ginger, and just see, um, there's quite a bit to see here. Our, our exhibits are back this direction. This particular one is on security. We have one of our instructors from China, that teaches Chinese. Val and I have an exhibit back here as well. Mine for my university and Val for mine test. And we have a language instructor and a biology instructor. And then over to my right are our lifelong learning exhibits. We have recently added a student research area and a student challenge that Val and Marie will talk about soon. So I think we're ready to move over to Val. Val will share with you the exciting networking opportunities we have to bring educators together. Thank you, Ellie. I hope everyone can hear me all right. I'm Val Librarian and I'm Valerie Hill. Uh, thanks for sharing a little of your background. I'll just share that I was a school librarian and a, a kindergarten through fifth grade teacher. Then when I earned my PhD, I began to teach library and information science as the information revolution changed libraries and education. So I've been in Second Life since 2006, primarily working as a virtual world librarian and now supporting the Virtual World Education Consortium. And if you'll follow me, we're going to walk 
back to, make sure I know which direction I'm heading. We're gonna walk around a bit. Let's get our avatars moving. We're gonna to walk to the info center. And yes, I'm going the right direction. So we'll walk this way. Um, I wanted to share that I'm going to use a speakeasy. So Ginger is sharing the screen. You'll be able to see my words as I'm talking. That's one of the great tools in Second Life to help with presentations like this. And I'll start that shortly. We're walking past the commons where there's events, concerts, things like that. And then on the left, we're walking past the Ed Resources Building, where we will soon have free things for educators to use. And look, I'm, I'm going right through the pond, so I'm going to fly over. Okay. okay, we're going over here to the Info Center. I took the shortcut. And I'm going to start my speakeasy. And as I touch up at the top of my screen, my script will come right into the local chat. Let's move over to our info center to talk about collaboration and how we can help educators and learners right here in Second Life. Our info center, and if Ginger will zoom in on the sign here, our info center is called the Thinkerer Selby Info Center. And this is named after Selby Evans, an elderly gentleman who was a champion of virtual worlds for learning. And this is a tribute for Selby. You can see that there's a space here where I can work as a librarian, but anyone who wants to help can work here and help teachers and learners understand best practices for teaching here in a virtual world. Volunteers from across the globe can hold a one hour shift to help others learn these best practices and where they might find their own niche, so to speak, depending on their skills or their interests. There are several seating areas over here where people can meet, talk, network, collaborate in small groups or in a little bit larger groups. And I wanna walk over here where we have some interactive signage. Librarians from the Community Virtual Library, which as I said, began here in 2006, that's when I entered. They've been, uh, they manage this space now and they train volunteers to share our resources. For example, I'm gonna stand right in front of the directory sign and you can zoom in. On the top right, there are links to our communities directory where we're curating virtual world communities. So you can find them. We share a variety of virtual communities by topics, which such as art or mathematics or literature or science. And when you click on it, you will get the links. And then on the top left, we share our member directory where interested educators can add them, their, self, their, their own selves and we can find mentors for particular skills here in the virtual world. Also, we're currently working on a directory of landmarks to high quality educational simulations. VWEC calls Second Life our main home base in virtual environments, but we are exploring other worlds besides Second Life because educators need awareness of how the metaverse is evolving. So follow me to the next interactive sign right over here. Many of us go on monthly field trips to platforms like Roblox, SignSpace, VR Chat, and many more with the VR Exploder Club. Marie here is our leader. And if you click on this sign, there's information on how you can join if you're interested in visiting these many evolving platforms. Also on this sign is information on how to join the student challenge, information about our stu student challenge, which Marie will talk about later. So we have interactive signs around the info center to help people find the information that they need. If you'll move around this way, you'll see that we have a viewing area for our YouTube playlist. Of course, you don't need to go into Second Life to view these of a YouTube video, but it's a great place for people to find our playlist and to discuss our um, Second Life expert series. Follow me out here onto the deck, another seating area where our volunteers meet for training. There's a sign here across the metaverse. 
with more information about exploring beyond Second Life. We have a presence for VWEC in the OpenSIM platforms. OpenSIM platforms are the open source worlds. They're based on Second Life code, which is now open source. We have monthly tours across the hypergrid. Those are the worlds that you can jump across with one avatar that are open source. And we start in the hypergrid world of Kitely. There's information about that on this sign. And for K-12, our younger students are already active in the metaverse. We began a mind test club. If you haven't heard of mind test, it's very similar to Minecraft. Thousands and thousands of kids have used Minecraft for learning and many, many schools have adopted Minecraft. But MindTest is open source, so we can help teachers learn this tool without any charge. I'm actually working with teachers at Shaw University, so some of you may have heard of it, may even have visited. Um, I'm working with um, Lucia Morales from Dublin, and we're bringing some students in to help teachers learn how to teach at a very early age. In MindTest, we are building a sustainable virtual library project, which I know I'm working with Magwa about how can you teach sustainability at a young age? We're not only teaching sustainability, but also digital citizenship, which is essential to young learners. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, wow, there's just so much here. Can I, how can I remember all of this that you're talking about? Well, follow me and I'll show you. Um, a good way to remember what we're talking about. And you don't have to remember everything. Right over here at the front entrance of the info center, if we go over here to the left, you'll find our calendars and quick resource area. Our in-world calendars right here in Second Life, it's the place where we strive to connect all the communities all the different worlds I'm talking about right here in one place. And you can come to this information info center whenever you have questions. All of this information is also found on our website. Notice on this wall, the big blue calendar is our VWEC Edgeverse Welcome Plaza calendar, which shows what is happening right here on this plaza where we're standing today. And then right below that, you will see two signs, one's for the info center calendar to share who's on duty right here. So if you drop by, you can chat one on one and learn more about not only Second Life, but the evolving metaverse for education. We also have a sign here for our virtual, virtual world community calendars. Those are calendars of all the educational virtual world communities that we partner with. So you can find the places that would most be helpful to you, your students, and your interests. As I said, all of this information is on our website as well, www.vweconsortium.org. You can look for calendars there, communities, and explore our website. Helping navigate the metaverse requires networking and collaboration because we can't possibly be everywhere, nor can we keep up with all the new platforms and apps that are evolving. But together, we can be aware of the potential in, in all of these different environments. Now, you can see there's stairs over here, but we're not going to go down the stairs today. I'll let you know that we have a backroom office there. We have a podcast station. Our info center director is a retired law librarian. She trains our volunteers. But as I said, anyone interested in teaching and learning in virtual worlds is welcome to join us. So next, we're going to walk up the stairs. So follow me out of the info center. We'll take a left and walk up the ramp and the stairs. This shows that it's accessible. We want to always build in accessibility. So we have both a ramp and stairs. We'll walk up to some other areas and talk a little more about the overall purpose of VWEC and this welcome plaza. You'll see there's a map here, a region map. 
We like to call this the National Park Lookout Area because it reminds us of when you go to a national park, there'll be signs like this that, that sort of share the overall vision and organization of the space that you're in. So notice that these signs um, show the areas. We were just at the models of teaching and then we walked across the pond and I jumped over to the info center. We have a meditation river where people can come and learn about breathing techniques and the importance of balancing our physical world life with our virtual world life. We have our ed, ed resources area. We have uh, many areas here. I'm gonna look at the one right here on the far left, gateway to thinking. Up in the sky, we have monthly tours and field trips to all the various educational simulations across Second Life by subject. Art museums, science exhibits, going up in space in a rocket, once a month, we go on a field trip to explore these high quality simulations with a gentleman in Japan, Yan Luria, who has curated amazing simulations for years. So you can look at our calendar if that sounds interesting. Um, we'll go back up the stairs this way to our landing point. I wanted you to see that this area shows the overall view of the Welcome Plaza, but the actual landing point is up here on the very top. So let's walk up to the landing point. If someone joins Second Life through our website, this is the landing point. This is where they enter Second Life. And when you come here, you will notice several orientation paths or portals. They take you to places if you are brand new to Second Life, you don't even know how to walk with your avatar. Step over here to new resident resources. We didn't want, as Ellie said, to reinvent the wheel when many communities had already built great orientation gateways, such as the one I'm standing in front of, virtual ability. Virtual ability is a high quality simulation that shares all kinds of resources about accessibility in both the physical world and the virtual world. You can go to their their sim, as we call it, and learn all kinds of ways to get around here in Second Life. Also up here at our landing point is our student research exhibit. These are some research projects that were presented this past year at the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium, but also at the Virtual Worlds Best Practices in Education Conference which is a wonderful conference held every spring. We are gathering these research exhibits by students and around the corner, if, you're, if you'll follow me, we have more student research projects because we want to illustrate the potential for serious learning in the metaverse. I hope I'm not walking too fast for you, but I, and just to be timely, I wanted to walk around here and show you that there, we're gathering more student research. Marie is going to talk about this soon. Some of these are from our student challenge, which is actually called Serious Learning in the Metaverse. So Marie is going to take us back down the stairs and over to our fireside deck where we have our expert series, and much more. So Marie, I will now hand the mic over to you. Okay, so let's um, let's go back down to where we, should I fly? <laughs> this is gonna take us a while to get over there. <laughs> and I can offer, I can also offer a teleport to Magua and- um, I think we can faster. fly, I think I can fly. You can fly over. Okay, well, um, yes, my name is Marie Vans. Um, I, just a tiny bit about myself, I am um, an associate professor in the Department of Systems Engineering at Colorado State University. And I'm also an, an adjunct professor at um, San Jose State University School of Information. 
Um, on both cases, I teach classes in these environments and I teach my students how to use these environments to create their own educational and training experiences. So um, we are here at what's known as the, the Virtual Worlds um, Education Consortium Fireside Deck. And here where we invite experts to use Virtual Worlds and to teach and train um, that, that teach and train um, in, in these worlds to, to share their expertise with us. These ser this series occurs every second and fourth Friday of the month at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And all the talks will reflect our goal of serious learning, and they are typically very well attended. Um, just to give you an idea of the lineup that we've had over the last couple of years, we've had um, James Al, who wrote the book, Making a Metaverse That Matters, Maria Korolov, who is an award-winning technology journalist who covers AI and cybersecurity and is the owner of the Hypergrid business block. We've also had um, John O'Connor, um, the strategic lead for the uh, European University at Technological University in Dublin, who is one of your keynote speakers um, today and the Sustainable Future conference organizers, Murat Gulmez as well. So we feel really lucky to have them come talk to us ab um, about what they're doing in these spaces. So um, in addition to having these experts come, um, we have at least one panel session schedule each quarter. And these sessions actually focus on the topic of interest to the audience, such as models of teaching, using AI in virtual world, that's a big topic now, um, and innovative builds that support student, students and learning. We have a panel actually coming up next month that's going to focus on the best practices for running student life uh, the Second Life Student Challenge teams. So this is for potential instructors. And um, speaking of the student challenge, let's walk over there and take a look at what these, um, these amazing um, students are doing with these amazing projects that they're doing. So if you just follow me, we follow off the deck, fall off the deck, <laughs> and then walk over this bridge. Okay, so the, we call it the Student Challenge, but really um, it's a rename for, for a hackathon. And you may have heard um, of hackathons before. They're a popular way to quickly create content and applications in our fast paced world of technology innovation. Um, events like this are typically run through academic institutions or high visibility technologies like Google and Meta. The final projects of these challenges are usually prototypes that schools or companies can use as proof of concept, which may be taken up for fleshing out completely later. Um, so let me go to this first one here. Um, this one here um, is, a, a again, these are all exhibits that students build um, during a, time, a, a, a three month time period under the um, under the uh, um, uh, umbrella of a, of, a, of a class that they are taking in in the real world. So this here is one I believe that was done by a, um, a high school group. And uh, as you can see, this is this is amazing. I'm just going to kind of walk through here. So they so they not only um, they not only create content in the form of presentations and slides, they also bring in uh, interactive 3D objects to, sh to make the, the, um, the ex learning experience even more um, um, amazing. Um, I think um, there, so one of the things that we do here is that we have these judges who are, um, who are experts in certain areas. So we have five judging criteria for when they build these, there these include 
um, authenticity and accuracy of content. They have to cite sources, including AI, by the way, um, and 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 we are we're very explicit about that. They are, they can use AI, but they must. Um, they must tell us that they used AI and they must cite what they did. Um, then another one is um, uh, access accessibility as, as, as um, Val was talking about, we have to make sure that everything is accessible. So we, we, we have a category for accessibility and we have one for interaction or immersion. So interaction, are there objects in here? There are things that you can interact with. And then um, finally, presentation. At the end of the of the 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 challenge period, each student each student team must create a presentation for the judges to watch, where they can talk about what they did and how they address these criteria. Um, the um, once we let's walk around a little bit more here, um, see some more of these. Once we once they um, the judges turn in their judging sheets, we tally those up, and we um, we have a, an award ceremony at the end of the the challenge period where we are their students are student teams are given um, prizes. Currently the prizes are um, one year membership premium memberships um, to second life so that um, and usually we give these to the instructors so that they can bring other students in and do um, do do other amazing things with um, with uh, Second Life. So you'll notice here in this one, they've created a completely enclosed environment that you can't see the rest of, um, and so you, you're you feel like you are very immersed in this space. Um, let me kind of walk back through here. Um, and um, the thing is, I wanted to let you know that the next challenge is coming up on October 11. We are having a, as I said, a panel where the instructors for these amazing student exhibits will talk about how they how they got the students involved, how they um, how they ran the the, the student teams and um, what our best practices, what they learned, what they learned about not what, what you shouldn't be doing. Um, our next, it, the, the actual registration is open at this point, but the challenge begins February 15th of next year, and it will continue through till, um, till April. And so if you are interested, um, we really encourage you to um, to participate because it is it is a lot of fun. So this one is uh, one for the Virtual Center of Global Awareness. Um, and also these are up as well. So if people wanted to come in and take a look at these, um, you are welcome. It's an open area. So anybody who um, wants to come look at these in more detail are perfectly welcome to. Um, I believe they will disappear um, at some point so we can get ready for the next student challenge. But the other thing we have is we do have on the VWEC um, YouTube channel, we do have a video record of all of these, um, of all of these builds. Um, so I think, Oh, and the other thing that we do that's kind of important here is that many of the students who who come in to, 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 to do this student challenge have never been in Second Life before. So one of the things that we do is we provide um, an opportunity, two opportunities. It's an absolute beginner's um, building class, which is which is um, for people, like I said, who've never been in here before, it's done by a, um, an organization called Builders Brewery, which is the premier in, um, uh, uh, organization in Second Life. They've been around since 2007, and they've been teaching students how to use Second Life since that, since that point in time. So they are the, they, they actually agree to come and, and give us um, private lessons for our students for this channel. So there's an absolute beginner's course. And then a couple weeks later, three weeks later, there's a, um, 
uh, uh, a, an advanced course. And in, these are all interactive courses. They are, these sessions are videotaped so that students who are unable to come at the time that they are presented live can still watch the, um, the presentation in practice. Um, okay, so then the other place I want to show you is, um, so there's a couple more, there's a couple more um, exhibits here. I'm going to kind of run over here. As you can see, we have a lot of space. And all these spaces, they're all the exact same size. So all students have the exact, exact same footprint on the ground, as well as the exact same limit on the number of prims that are allowed um, so that um, so that it's, it's, it's a level playing field. So here's another very beautiful um, exhibit based on, for, on sustainability. Um, and then let's see here. I think there is, there's a couple more here. Um, you may, you may recognize some of these because they are students of, um, John Sidearms and, uh, um, and, and, and Mur Murat's, uh, students, uh, also known as Magua in Second Life. Here's another really nice, um, student exhibit. So again, um, the other the other thing is we I, I don't want to run run out of time here, but the other thing is that um, I really encourage you to to get a um, get a an account and come come look at these because this is this represents an amazing amount of work for students and uh, they're always really excited at the end um, to um, to to present their work. Uh, here's another one for sustainable development, quality education. And then as you can see, you can just walk through these and, and learn about uh, different aspects of uh, quality education. And then the final one, which is a one I believe might have been first place, um, is the rainforest. And these students did did an amazing job here. Um, or the student did an amazing job here um, with um, learning about rainforest. And I'm actually not sure how you, <laughs> you can see um, they've, uh, they've added, you know, moving, moving water and they've, uh, they've added uh, a lot of information about resources. Um, they've added like um, at Val was saying, this is accessible because you can, you can use a, um, I think you can use, <laughs> can go up the, up the stairs, although I'm somewhat stuck. <laughs> but anyway, um, then the final place I want to show you here, um, if we will make our way out of here, this is, like I said, this is, um, you get inside here and you, you can't really even see your way out. It's so um, it's, it's it's so immersed in in the um, um, in 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 the actual space itself. Fortunately, the walls are transparent, um, and so you can just walk through them. <laughs> the final place I wanted to show you is the um, the resource center, which is the space in the middle where we where we do the um, the uh, presentations and uh, the, the beginning and the opening ceremonies. And as, we're, as you can see here, we're already set up for, the, for, for getting to the student challenge. And um, we have a lot of information. There's a whole information packet you can get about the, um, about the, um, the, the, the challenge as well as resources such as um, other places around Second Life that you can go visit for um, for for really nice educational experiences. The rubric that we use for judging is on the wall. Um, a, um, a a link to virtual ability, which was mentioned before, which is a um, an, an amazing orientation for brand new students, and then the calendar of events as well. We also have some um, we also have some videos on the back here that show um, the, some of the, um, the best 
student exhibits their their presentations that they have done. And I think that's um, that's it for 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 my part. I, we have time for questions. <laughs>